Hey everybody, today on Rado we're running through Sea of Thieves. But before I begin, please turn your subtitles on the Klingon channel so that if I make any rules goofs, you know what they are. And of course, I'm not Rado, I'm Shay Parker. I'm helping Rado cover even more games. Games like Sea of Thieves, where we find ourselves on the sea. And hey, guess what? We're thieves, or more specifically, pirates. Now, this game is based off of the Sea of Thieves video game. Um, if you know that, it is very much about being pirates, having a crew, going out into the world, and, uh, you know, doing some pirating. Um, but uh, if you're not familiar with that, uh, that's okay. You don't really need to be to play this game. Just know that I have two different uh, pirate crews. On my left side, I've got this yellow crew. Right side, you got the red crew. And, uh, Unlike the video game, uh, if you are aware of it, uh, this is not a cooperative game. We are competing with each other, so each pirate crew is out for themselves. We've got this big sea. Uh, we've got, on the sea, we've got our ships. Each player starts with two ships, which we've placed on uh, two various islands. Um, this is a smaller map for a two-player game. Uh, three or four-player games, you'd have more of these island piece, or water pieces out to, for a bigger map. And uh, out in the world, we've got some islands, we've got some skeletons, we've got some treasure um, all around. We've heard about some treasure, we need to go and plunder it. And then we've got the center here, we've got the outpost, which is where we'll do some trading and all that good stuff. Um, now, I want to jump right in. We both start with sloops, uh, these small little ships, but they can be upgraded into bigger ones. Oh, and these should be um, standees, you know, you put them face up, but for top-down filming, it just makes more sense to lie them on their side like this. So, I want to get going with left brain here, and we start with a few things. We start with a little bit of money, um, second player starts with a little bit more. And we start with some fortune cards. These are just like little action cards, things that you can boost your abilities and stuff. And we start with some voyages. Um, now I've got two voyages that are both treasure hunts, um, and these are considered meager voyages. We can get better ones in the future. And these are how we're going to uh, win points, uh, which uh, this point tracker is showing. Uh, first to 25 points triggers the end game, and whoever has the most points at the end wins. So these voyages will help us get points, but will also help us get some money, some more treasure, and that's all going to be important for upgrading our ship as well, which is going to be pretty uh, a pretty crucial thing for us to do if we want to compete in the later game. So I think at the beginning of the game, I'm going to choose one of these uh, voyages for my ship to go on. I've got a couple that are both treasure hunts and goods recoveries. These uh, voyages that I randomly drew are all fairly similar. Basically, they require me to go to a place, do some plundering, and place some progress tokens on uh, these cards once I activate them. Once you activate a voyage, you really want to see it through to the end because if you abandon that voyage, you get penalized. So I want to be kind of you know careful about which ones I go to. So these are each telling me uh, a few things, but I'll show you. Um, I'm telling you because I'm going to activate one of them at the start. So this one, for example, wants me to go uh, do plunder accidents at Sharkbait Cove. Uh, and Sharkbait Cove is uh, somewhere out here. Um, uh, do need to double check something real quick. Just realized I forgot to take out the, uh, so the specific um, uh, voyages that correspond to the map tiles I'm not using. So, drew a, a new, discarded one, drew a new one. Um, and this one is a little bit different. Um, this is uh, trying to uh, ha have me attacking the skeleton ship, which is not on the board just yet. Uh, but anyway, well, these treasure hunt ones, they want me to go to a place, uh, specifically this one says Sharkbait Cove, which is, oh, that's Shark Fin Camp. Sharkbait Cove is over here. Um, this one wants me to go to the Sailor's Bounty. Hex, and that is up here. Now those are not too far away from each other, so me being over here is a good position for me. Um, and I think I'm going to activate the uh, Sailor's Bounty um, quest. So, start of my turn, I'm going to activate the Sailor's Bounty quest. Now each ship can only have one uh, voyage um, at a time. So it's sort of locked in until I abandon this or until I complete it. And in order to complete it, I need to go there, I need to uh, do some plundering, and then I need to uh, put progress tokens on this card instead of gaining the treasure that you otherwise get from plundering. So that's the beginning of my turn. Um, and in order to do that for this ship, I'm going to activate it. You sort of get three activations per turn, and you need to activate each ship at least once. So I'm activating this ship beginning it, I'm going to start this voyage, and now I get to do crew tasks. Each 
ship has two basic crew members and each crew member can do a basic task. Most of the time this is moving. So I can take my ship and uh, there are two ships on the board so I'm gonna make sure that I'm picking the uh, appropriate one. Uh, I think that's this one, it's got the little white chicken. So to give you uh, an example, yeah, see, these ships are just a little bit different from each other and uh, they kind of match the uh, boards on here. So uh, the one with the white faced chicken, uh, we'll go forward. So for each crew, I get one task and one of the tasks is move a single space. So we're gonna use both of the crew tasks to move single spaces. The other things you can do are like repairing your ship, bailing out the water, or if they've been defeated, they need to get revived. Um, so that was the first thing that I'm doing, and now I'm going to do a full sail action. What I've just done is tasks. Uh, after you do your tasks, you get to take an action. And one of the actions is full sail. Basically, I make a crew roll, which is a number of dice equal to my number of crew on the ship. And for every three or higher, that counts as a success, and sixes count as two successes. And for each success, I get to move in a straight line. So I rolled two threes, that means I can move up to two spaces. I only need to go one more space, so I'm just gonna go here to Sailor's Bounty. Um, and that's the end of that first uh, action. We, like I said, get three actions. So I'm gonna use that to activate the ship again. Uh, this time, the tasks, I don't really have any tasks that I need to do, so you don't need to worry about it. I am just going to uh, leave that. And I now have these two skeletons in my way. I wanna do some plundering in Sailor's Bounty um, because that's what my quest requires of me. But if I plunder and there are still skeletons there, they're going to hurt my crew. I don't necessarily want that, although it's honestly not that bad. Um, so I don't know if it's, uh, if I need to worry about it too much, but I'm gonna make a plunder action and see how I feel about it after the results come up. When you plunder, you can do a few things. You can attack skeletons in your area. You can uh, pick up uh, any treasure tokens that are already on the map here, or you can uh, just try to, um, you know, complete quest or just loot the island. There's always something that you can find on an island. Sometimes it's valuable, sometimes it's not. You see once you pick it up. Um, but I only rolled one success. I kind of want to make sure that uh, these skeletons are dealt with at least a little bit. So I'm going to knock out one of the skeletons. And when you do that, it goes back into uh, the loot bag. Because even though there's loot on these islands, there's also some skeletons there. So got to be careful about that. Um, now, I'm going to uh, take my third action, which has to be on my other ship, and so I'm going to activate that one, and you know what? There's already some treasure on this island, so I'm just gonna stay where I am, and I'm gonna try and loot that treasure. Uh, again, taking the plunder action, I should say haul the treasure, slightly different action, um, but I'm plundering first. I got two successes, so one of them is going to be to pick up the treasure. Once you get some uh, cargo, it goes face down in ship hold, so people don't necessarily know what you have, or you know maybe they just, uh, if, if they remember, they might, but otherwise. Um, and I've got one more success, so I'm going to pull a token from the loot bag. And again, this could be uh, some good stuff, or it could be a skeleton, which would mean that I take a little damage. Oh, and that reminds me, because there was one skeleton left over, one of my crew got defeated. They got flipped over, but on the beginning of their turn, they will flip back up. It's just, uh, if I was also taking damage, that would be an issue. Anyway, uh, here on Snake Island, which is this place, I drew a loot token and it is a cargo. So again, I could take a look at it. I see that it's got uh, some cargo pieces. And now, on these cargo pieces, there are a few bits of important information mainly the cash value that it has, and that's also the little symbol on the top right saying that it's worth money, but symbols on the top left uh, are also uh, connected to the various uh, companies. There's a name for them. They're basically like guilds in this world, and uh, people who play Sea of Thieves regularly are maybe screaming at me for not knowing the names of them, uh, but there's three different guilds, and they like three different types of cargo. So there's, you know, basic supplies, there's sort of like trophies from skeletons that you defeated, um, and uh, what's the other one? Uh, it's on here somewhere. Supplies, trophies, where oh yeah, there's there's emeralds which are, are are you know gems which are kind of like wilds 
Um, and then the other one's not actually out yet. It is uh, just sort of treasure in, in general. And uh, if you can turn in three of the same kind, you get a commission, which means you get a couple points out of it. So yes, I could sell them right away, but I do also um, want to uh, collect you know, a set before I do so. But anyway, that is my turn. I have uh, just finished that. I'm gonna lower the color temperature of this a little bit real quick. All right, that should be a little bit better. Was, the sun was peeking out while I was recording. It's getting a little, a little too bright, so that should look a little better. Anyway, that is it for left brain's turn. So it moves over to right brain, and we've got some similar things to think about. Uh, what quests do we have? Um, well, we've got a few things that are actually interested in fighting skeletons. So, you know, going all the way over here with those two skeletons, that could be good. Um, so for example, yeah, I've got uh, a skeletal tithe. If the ship defeats a skeleton or skeleton captain, place a progress token on the card. If there are two more progress tokens, complete the voyage. And you just get a point for that. So that's cool. Mm, all of these voyages, though, they're getting me points, which are great, but they're not getting me any money. And I do kind of want to get some cash because I'm looking over here and I'm seeing some special crew that we can hire. And I think that might be worth getting. So I'm going to start off by trying to pick up this bit of uh, bit of treasure. Yeah, the sun is really coming out. It was very cloudy when I started when I started filming, but it's coming out. Hopefully it'll, it'll go down a little bit. Anyway, um, there is some treasure right here. I want to pick that up. So I'm going to activate my... Uh, one of my sloops here. Let's activate the dark red sloop. And again, we don't need to go anywhere. So the crew tasks, we don't need to do any of that. We are going to make a crew action to do some plundering. Uh, and we got a six and a four. So that's three successes. I'm definitely going to pick one of these up, um, pick up this loot. And then I'm going to, let's see, I've got two successes. I'm going to pull two loot tokens. I'm going to pull them one at a time because if one of them is a skeleton, I only use the other one to fight it. Um, it was not. It was a plank slash banana. These are just supplies. And if you play the game, you know, you need planks, you need bananas. Uh, they can help you to help your crew to survive, but they can also help patch up your ship. I'm going to roll the dice a little bit, take another uh, loot token. Uh, yes, it was another good thing. So this is some cargo, some loot, and it happens to match the loot type on the other uh, bit of loot that I got. Now I'm, so I was just gonna go in, trade in for some ca uh, quick cash, maybe get some new crew, could even upgrade. Um, but now I'm looking at these and if I can get just one more of these uh, skull icons, which there is one right here, there's a wild token over here, then that'll actually be worth it to, uh, to, to do the collection. So because my two ships are in the same space, I can, trade things between them. We're not in the middle of movement. So I'm going to pass um, some stuff over. And the reason I'm doing this is because I've, I've activated this loop once already, and I want uh, one ship to have all of the loot that it's that we're carrying so that we can turn it all in and get the bonus. So now I'm going to activate the other sloop, and it's going to take its task actions to go one, two, and then we're trying to get here. So we're going to do a full sail. Hopefully we get at least two successes, which we did. Um, so one, two, that was its action. Next action, it's going to uh, do the same thing. It's just going to stay there and it's going to do some plundering. We really just need one success here, which is exactly what we got, just one success. Twos and ones don't count as anything. So now I've got this last piece of, tre last piece of treasure and on my next turn, we're gonna go back to the outpost, sell it, we're gonna get some points. It's gonna be great. I didn't even activate any of my voyages, which, you know, you are absolutely able to do. You can kind of ignore that if you want to. Um, there are good ways to get points, but the ones you start with are meager, so they're not gonna get you that much. With a little bit more money, you can take on uh, valuable quests, you can take on legendary quests. And those can get you a lot of points, but they're a little bit harder to do. But anyway, that is the end of uh, the actions part of the round. Now, there's a few more things that happen at the end of you know players' actions, but those only come uh, in certain circumstances. If we're damaged, or you know if uh, we've got too many cards or something like that, that's not the case right now. So we move on. The next thing would be uh, dangerous waters. If there's any hazards out in the world, uh, AKA skeleton ships, or uh, if there is. 
let's see, uh, a Megalodon. You know, if those things are out on the board, then they start activating. They're not there yet, but they're probably about to show up because after that, you draw an event card, and this will tell you a few things, the top of which is what spawns. Something's always gonna spawn, um, and so what this is telling me is that a, uh, a skeleton ship is going to spawn on a specific icon. Um, every different uh, map tile has one of these icons on it, and so we're going to spawn the first skeleton ships. Now, because there's no skeleton ships on the board already, this is going to be a skeleton sloop, uh, which is a small little guy, and we determine where it's going to be by just rolling a die and matching it to uh, the numbers. And I randomly set up this map, so the number's available, 1, 6, 5, 4, again, because we're playing a two-player map. Uh, so it's one, which means it's going to be in this section. And it just pops up right here. Now, I think Left Brain has a voyage that's all about fighting a skeleton sloop. So now that that's out there, they might want to start going after it. Yeah, um, patrolling the sea. This one's all about uh, damaging skeleton ships. But let's bring out skeleton ship uh, card to show what this looks like. So the skeleton sloop is out on the board. Do you have a behavior card somewhere? Here we go. We'll just sort of tuck this underneath for now. So the skeleton sloop uh, starts with a couple pieces of treasure on it. I don't necessarily know what these are um, because, you know, they're on a skeleton ship uh, and not just out in the world where people can talk about it. Um, and it's got four spaces for damage. The more damage uh, it has taken, the less damage it will deal to us. Um, so uh, that has been put out um, as part of the event card, but there's a little bit more to do. Where did I put, here we go, uh, the event card. Next, it says uh, Flotsam. Draw two tokens from the loot bag and one token from the treasure bag. Return any skeletons that were drawn, then roll a random C tile and place the remaining tokens in that tile's guns hex because there's these little red gun taxes uh, on every map tile. So we're just getting a little bit of treasure um, and uh, a little bit of loot. And so it's just making the, the ocean a little bit nicer, a little bit more uh, you know, appealing for us to pirate. Um, but if we draw any skeletons, like I drew one up, that just goes back in the bag. So this part of the event token is usually a good thing. So these guys are going to go to Location number one again. All right, so it said it was going to the guns there. A lot of uh, a lot of stuff's been happening in this area. And lastly, shifting sands. Uh, it says the scurvy knave can remove a skeleton token in an island hex and place it on another island hex. Now, uh, the scurvy knave is what they call the person in last place, and it often has ways uh, for that player to affect the game that usually come up in event cards. So. Right now, we're both at zero points, so the next tiebreaker is who has the least money. Now that is left brain here, so I get to decide where uh, a skeleton token, I can pick one up and move it somewhere else. Well, I've got this skeleton token, skeleton token in my space, and that's kind of stopping me from doing any bounties, um, or doing the, the treasure hunt that I'm trying to do. So I think I'm going to pick it up and I don't know, my thought is maybe I want to put it closer to where my opponent is because, you know, I don't know what they're working with. They haven't put out any voyages, so maybe they want to go for something, but maybe not. I don't no real reason to believe that they have a skeleton-focused voyage, even though they do. Um, so I could put that over there. I could put it over here. I could make this shark bait cove just filthy with skeletons, but I know that I have another voyage over there, so maybe I don't want to do that. Uh, yeah, I'm going to try and put it in shark fin camp on the other side of the map. Uh, and I've cleared up Sailor's Bounty, so that's good for me. Uh, and that's done with the event cards, and now we each draw a fortune card. We haven't talked about fortune cards yet, or we haven't really seen any in use. These are just uh, little one-time use cards that can boost things for you. So that is the end of the round, which means we're starting a new round. And Left Brain gets to go first. Let's take a look at what are these what are these fortune cards we've gotten are. Um, so we've got a rowboat. I play this when one of my ships sinks. Your ships can sink. Uh, if, they, if they take on too much water, we each have water levels, and if these get to the top, our ship is sunk. Uh, but those 
happen at the end of our turn. So we always have a little bit of time to um, kind of repair ourselves. Uh, so play this one when my ship sinks. If uh, my other ship is within four hexes, I remove up to two cargo tokens from the shinking ship's hold and place them in the other ship's hold. That's pretty good because you lose all your cargo when your ship sinks. So useful to have. Long shot, this allows you to attack ships from adjacent hexes as opposed to being in the same hex. That's pretty useful. Merchant Alliance Emissary. Play this card at the start of your turn. During this turn, each time you complete a Merchant Alliance Voyage, then you... Uh, or claim a Merchant Alliance Commission, place a progress token on this card. Then gain one point for each token on the card discarded at the end of the turn. So this is really useful if I've got Merchant Alliance quests, which I, I don't at the moment. My uh, my quest, my current quest is with the Gold Hoarders. I'm realizing I have a reference card right here. So my current quest is with the Gold Hoarders, and then I have another one uh, for the Order of Souls. So those are the other two uh, guilds. Um, but the Merchant Alliance, they really like the supplies kind of cargo. And I think I do have that. Yeah, that's what I have. So if I can, you know, acquire a little bit of uh, cargo, you know, I can get some extra points for that if I get, you know, a commission with them. But this is a, a thing I want to hold on to so that I can really get a, a good amount of value out of it. And then I've got a... a a load barrel ball. Um, this is a special kind of cannonball, so when I am open firing against another player's ship, you know, shooting them, uh, then if I get any successes, they can't spend resource tokens, that's these little plank bananas, uh, until the end of their next turn. So if I really want to sink someone's ship, I would use that against them because they wouldn't be able to repair afterwards. Um, but that's not the case right now. I'm just trying to uh, do my treasure hunt. I'm a pirate, I wanna hunt some treasure. Um, so I'm going to stay where I am, although my crew member does need to heal itself at the beginning of, it, of their tasks. And now I'm just going to do a little bit of plundering. For each success I get, I can put a progress token on my quest. And I got a six, that's two successes. So I'm going to take two progress tokens on it. Uh, and then at what it says is, if there are two or more progress tokens on this card, complete the voyage. So it automatically completes. As a reward, I get a point, and I get a piece of treasure. So I'm just going to randomly draw a treasure from the bag. Hopefully it's from the uh, Merchant Alliance, because that would be pretty useful for me. Uh, and it is. I've drawn this one's worth uh, 500, and... Uh, it has the Merchant Alliance little symbol in the top left. I know this is really small, um, but uh, that's what this little symbol is. So that goes into my ship hold. It is a different ship than this one, and this one is uh, the one that's holding the other bits of Merchant Alliance goods. So I would want to make them meet up if I want to sell those goods. You know, maybe I do. Even just getting a point out of that could be, it's, it's better than nothing, and I'll get two points for the commission, so maybe I'll do that. So I've activated this ship. That was the first turn. Next turn, I'm going to activate them again. I'm going to go one, two. Those are the crew tasks, moving it a little bit. And then doing a full sail to get that extra little bit of movement. I got four successes. I only needed one. We're just meeting up with a friend. And we're trading. I'm just passing this over because right brain, or not right brain yet, but uh, on the uh, other sloop, we are going to move one, two, and now we're at the outpost. And at the outpost, you can do a special action, which is trade. And actually all the trade steps are listed on this board here because it has to do a lot with what's going on over here. Um, so I'm gonna do the trade action. And the first thing you do is sell cargo. Oh, you know what? If I wanted to use, if I wanted to use this card that I had, the Merchant Elias Emissary, I would have needed to play it at the start of my turn. Now, I didn't know that I was gonna get the special loot that was gonna help me uh, complete this, so I wouldn't have played it. Um, and in fact, I didn't. So I can't actually do that. If I wanted to, I could hold on. I don't have to sell my cargo. Um, but I, even though it would get me an extra point, I think this is still more valuable to do this now so that I can uh, buy some of the extra stuff out of it. So I am selling this cargo. Uh, there's. 500, 600, and 100. So that means I'm getting 1,200 gold out of it. Grab this, 1,200, 200. So now what am I sitting on? 
I have 1800 gold. It's a pretty good amount of gold because there are a couple things that I'm looking to pick up. But first off, putting all the loot and the cargo, all that back in the bag. So trying to pick something up. Next thing I do is I can repair. I don't have any damage on me, so I don't need to worry about that. Uh, but after that, I can upgrade. Now this is what I'm definitely thinking about doing because it costs 1200, which is most of what I uh, have. It's you know all of what I just uh, you know picked up, but I think it's worth it. Pay 1200, and I'm going to upgrade this ship to a galleon, which means I also take this token off. And is this the right one? I think it's this one. I don't know. As long as you keep them straight, it doesn't really matter. Uh, especially now, this uh, the sloop is not is no longer a sloop. It is now a brigantine. It's a bigger ship. It can hold more crew. So I grab another crew token. So now whenever I do crew actions, I'm rolling three dice instead of two. Let's keep the cargo that I had. It also has uh, more space for water, so I can take a little bit more damage. Um, uh, but, you know, that's that's all well and good. Now I've got 600 bucks left, 600 gold left. And there are a few things I can do. I see some, uh, or after I upgrade, I can hire special crew. Now there's Johnny Bones. He costs 800, so I can't pick him up. Uh, but we've also got Santiago. He only costs 400. And this special crew, if I pick it up, would replace one of my regular crew. And I grab this card. They have special abilities. They're also worth points at the end. Cost 400, and it says once per turn when claiming a commission, um, which is, oh yeah, forgot to claim a commission. I turned in three pieces of loot with the same uh, with the same tag, so I earned a commission with the guild that appreciates that. And that what that means is I get two extra points for it. Uh, so I'm in a commanding lead now. And what this guy says is once per turn when claiming a commission, the ship can count a treasure token as any token type. So it makes it a lot easier to claim commissions. That's not bad. And then Frost Heart Phineas here, this ship treats treacherous waters hexes as open sea hexes. Now, a lot of these spaces on the map are treacherous. If you try and sail all the way through them, then you're gonna take some damage. Uh, so, but this with this guy, you can just go right through them. And also when you do full sail, you can move an additional hex. That could be really useful for you know getting places in a hurry. I do kind of like that. I really like Santiago. But another thing I'm looking at is if I buy, let's say, Santiago, I'll only have 200 gold left. And if I want to pick up some new voyages, I need to pay for them. Meager, one, meager voyages cost 100, valuables cost 200, and legendary ones cost 3. I think, you know what? I want to have it all. I'm going to pick up Santiago. He costs 400. I only have 200 left. Um, that is in the Brigantine. I'm going to sort of slide him under just so, you know, I, I remember that I have this ability and I can take Santiago, replacing one of my crew members. Um, and now if this ship ever goes down, I lose Santiago. Um, so I'm now much more, I have much more vested interest in keeping uh, the Brigantine afloat. Uh, but uh, it'll be worth an extra point. This, the Brigantine is also worth a couple extra points at the end of the game. And when claiming commission, the ship counts, uh, can count a treasure token as any token type. So that's pretty cool. But now I spent 400 on that. Um, and I want to uh, look at quests, or seek new voyages, as they say. So I draw three cards, and I can keep as many as I want, provided I can pay for them. I want to grab a valuable quest. I'm just going to look at the top three. I, I know that these are worth more than the meager quests, and I'll keep... I'll keep one of them. So I look at three of them. I see two of them are special delivery. When this ship sells cargo during a trade action, it can discard five resource tokens from its hold to complete this voyage. Now resource tokens are these plank banana things, and they're really good for patching up my ship. And I only and you start with two on each ship. So I have four. I would need to find another one and then you know make sure to move uh, between them, or if I could just find a lot of them, you loot, you can find decently easily. Um, and if I can do that, I get 800 bucks and three points. It's a big deal if I can do this. And I got two of the same one. The other one, Paymaster, if the ship has five or more treasure tokens in its hold at the start of your turn, complete this voyage. Uh, both of these are pretty cool. I think the cargo one might be a little bit easier for me to accomplish 
just because I technically have four of the five that I need. So I'm gonna hold on to this special delivery um, and you know discard the other two. Let's go to, oops, it's not, it should be there. Um, you just go to the bottom of the, of the deck. So, I've chosen that because I grabbed a special crew that another one flips up. And here we've got Bombardier Betty. Costs 400 when the ship makes an open fire action, roll additional die. That's pretty useful, uh, especially if you're going to be doing some fighting. But now we're going over to Right Brain. Uh, again, we also have some sloops. And what do we have? We have some treasure. Is this the same? We've got two skulls. Uh, three skulls. Oh, yeah, we do have a full you know, three skull commission. Let's see, what, what kind of uh, fortune cards do we have? Return fire. If someone attacks me, I attack them back. That's actually really important because you take damage. You, you rise your water level at the end of your turn. So if I attack someone on their turn, that can be a really big deal. Persuasive offer. Uh, when purchasing a special crew card, I, I use this to reduce the cost of it by 200 gold. Pretty useful. Uh, skeleton Horde. Play when another player's ships move to an island hex, draw two skeleton tokens from the loot bag and place them in the island hex. That could be useful if I know someone's going for a uh, bounty like they were. Um, and then Shipwreck. I play this card during my turn to make the following special actions. Make a crew roll, draw a token from the loot bag for each success and place it in your ship's hold. Discard any skeleton tokens. So this is uh, basically, I assume you're to make a, draw a token from the loot bag for each success. Um, so this is sort of a safe way to plunder an island. I don't need to worry about skeletons. But I would want to have maybe a better ship before doing that. So I think I'm going to do something similar. I'm going to take my sloop. Uh, which sloop is this? This one here. And we're going to go to the outpost. We are also going to sell and do some upgrading. But I'm going to uh, get uh, a new crew member for a little bit cheaper than, uh, than they did, I think. So... I will spend my crew tasks to go one, two. You can have two ships in a space at any time, so that's totally fine. I'm going to sell my cargo. I also am going to earn a commission, um, but I'm going to get a little bit more money. I get 1,300 uh, with these, um, with with what I brought in. So 1,300, and I also started with a little bit more gold, um, and I got a commission because they all had skulls. So the Order of Souls was very happy about that. One, two points. And next up, I could repair. I don't need to. I'm going to upgrade, spending 1,200. And now I still have 800 left. One, two, uh, and that. So I'm going to do the same thing. Upgrading my sloop into a brigandine, a brig, as they are called, I think. Get another crew member. Keep the cargo. Water level. Uh, and then the money. Money is not held onto a ship. It's just you know held by the person. So I've got this uh, this cool new ship. Oh yeah, speaking of cool new ship, let's bring out the cool new ship onto the location. And let's see, hire a special crew. Yeah, I'm going to be playing the persuasive offer. So I play this card and reduce the cost of the, the crew member that I grab by two. I like Bombardier Betty. I think I want to grab uh, her because she is really going to help me attack enemies. And I have quests that want me to attack. Um, uh, although, actually, these quests... I'm sorry, Left Brain's the one who wants to attack the ship. Right Brain, we want to attack skeletons on the island. But that's okay. This is still a pretty useful thing to have. Uh, and, and going after the skeleton sloop is not a bad idea no matter what. So... I've read Bombardier Betty. I need to find her, um, find her special token. Uh, did not set this up because I didn't want to, you know, prep the specific people that were coming out. So just need to find. Here we go, Bombardier Betty special token. And that costs only two hundred because of the card that I played. So now I have six hundred, and I can draw some quests and you know probably keep some of the ones that I draw. I'm gonna draw one of each. I'm gonna draw a meager, I'm gonna draw a valuable, and I'm gonna draw a legendary. So let's see what I get with this. Uh, the meager special delivery, again, it's the same kind of thing that uh, Left Brain got, but this only requires uh, you to discard three resource tokens, um, but it only gets you 400 bucks and a single point as opposed to theirs which got more because it was 
valuable instead of meager. My valuable one, Skeletal Tithe, I have one of these already, but this is a better version of it, Skeletal Tithe, which is basically when you defeat a skeleton or skeleton captain, put tokens on this. I need to defeat four skeletons on this, and I'll get three points out of that. I think that's pretty good. And then the treasure hunt. This is five pieces of treasure, three uh, points on it, and it needs me to go to Keel Hall Fort, which is over here. Um, but it will require me to get six progress tokens on this card. So I would be going there, I would just be plundering a fair amount and putting a lot of stuff on this card, and once I do that, um, I can get a lot of stuff out of it. I do think this is useful to have. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm gonna grab, grab the, uh, the legendary and the valuable. I don't think I'm gonna keep this special delivery though. Although, let's see, is this, you know what? I can do this one, uh, I could do this one like immediately. So you know what? I'm gonna keep all of them. Yeah, 600, <clears throat> pan 600 to keep all of them. Uh, this is a little foolhardy for a reason, but I'm still feeling okay about it. Uh, so that was my first activation. Second, I'm going to I'm going to activate the other sloop. I'm going to put the special delivery onto it because I know that I can just do this immediately. So uh, I'm going to do that. Crew, crew gets me into the location, and now because there's three ships here. I choose another player's ships and bump it out. And that player gets to decide where it goes. Well, I don't want to be here. The left brain doesn't want to be there because the skeleton ship will come in and attack it. Uh, so, could be, and the reason it's doing that is because it's within three spaces. But these two ships are safe because the outpost is kind of a safe haven and also they're bunched up like this. So it's going to go uh, a little to the left. And uh, we are... Um, we are still here. Uh, I'm going to uh, take another uh, trade action, like we just did. I'm selling cargo, which I don't have any other cargo to sell, but I do have these three supplies, um, or three, three resources, I should say. Um, so putting those in there. And I can immediately complete this quest, which gets me 400 bucks. 400. Um, and a point, so now we are tied. Oh yeah, I forgot to grab a new skeleton crew. We've got DeMarco Singh, cost 700. Once per turn, when selling cargo, the ship can claim a commission by trading in two of the same cargo type. If I have that combined with this other one, which uh, says one is wild, that could be a really good combo. But that's for left brain, not for me. Anyway, I've got 400 bucks. Um, I could go through the rest of this stuff. I could repair, can't upgrade, uh, hire a special crew. I could hire Frostheart Phineas, which is not horrible. In fact, I'm going to do that. 300. Pretty cheap. And it's worth a point at the end of the game. Um, so grabbing Frostheart Phineas will allow me to sail a fair bit faster. So that's that. Um, and new special crew, Osgar Seamark. Uh, this is similar to Bombardier Betty. You get to roll an additional die. Um, so there's, I think most of these have, uh, you know, a copy of them uh, in there. Um, I think maybe a couple of them are unique, though. I'm not sure. Anyway, uh, that's the end of that activation. So we'll do one more. And maybe I... Oh, yeah, and this quest was completed. Um, I, do I want to start a quest with my galleon? It's sometimes useful for me to hold off on starting a quest if I am not able to, you know, start putting progress on it this turn. Because occasionally, if you get sunk or, you know, you change your mind, you have to abandon a quest, then you get penalized. I don't want to do that. So I think I might hold off, but I'm looking at the treasure hunt, which wants me to go over here and just pick up tons of treasure. I think I want to start working towards that, but I'm going to need to get there, and that is going to take a little bit of time. So I'm not going to activate that just yet. Instead, I'm going to just start sailing over there. I have three crew now, so my crew tasks are one, two, three movement. And then I'm gonna make an, uh, an open sail. Again, rolling three dice now. And I got three successes, but you can only go in a straight line. So I'm gonna stop right there. Actually, I got four successes on that. Um, okay, 
end of uh, that turn, which means we go to enemies. Uh, the uh, Now the skeleton sloop is going to go, and uh, we follow a little bit of a checklist to see. So is the skeleton ship in the same hex as a player ship? It is not, which means we go to is a player ship within three hexes, the only standee in its hex, and not in the outpost hex. Well, there is one within three, but it's in the outpost. So the answer to that is also no. Um, if it was yes, it would move towards it and attack, uh, but it's not. So the scurvy knave moves the skeleton ship up to three hexes, can't go to the outpost um, or you know uh, into an enemy space. But it can go to an island. So who's the scurvy knave right now? We are again both tied. Who has the least money? Now it's right brain. So I'm trying to decide where I want this ship to go. I'm not interested in fighting it, um, and I see there's just some cash just sitting on the ocean. I'm not too close to that. Left brain's gonna have the first chance of getting to it. So I'm gonna say that this ship moves to be guarding that cash. Um, I think that's a good place for it. Uh, so that's the enemy movement. Now we have an event card. This it shows a tentacle um, that is beginning to summon the Kraken. Now the Kraken is scary. You don't want to be on the open ocean when the Kraken shows up uh, because it will envelop you and uh, trap you and try to kill you. And you can't leave when the Kraken is, uh, is trying to kill you, So, th but it's only one sixth of the way there. Now there are event cards that put up to three tentacle tokens out um, or put tentacles, do something else. This is an easier one. Uh, but the rest of it, let's see what it has. Uh, Chattering Horde, roll a random C tile. Six, that is this one. And place a skeleton token from the loot bag in each island hex on the C tile. All right, so I need to grab some skeletons out of here. Just grabbing a bunch and finding one. One for Thieves Haven. Well, wow. handful of tokens. I didn't grab a single skeleton. All right, I grabbed one. Um, Let's see some more. There we go. And another skeleton on crooked masts. So that area is looking a little bit more dangerous. And then we've got Cursed Guardians, the scurvy knave, right brain, places a random skeleton captain token, two skeleton tokens from the loot bag, and one token from the treasure bag in an island hex of their choice. Now, I do have uh, quests that care about defeating skeletons, uh, specifically skeleton captains as well. Um, or I guess it's either. Um, ooh, 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 ooh. So I think it would be useful to have it closer to here because I think that I want to, to go after them. And well, this is the problem. Left Brain's gonna get to go first and they could get to either of these islands Although this one would be harder to get to if they don't want to go through the damage. You know what? I'm going to Keel Hall Fort anyway. Let's say we're going here. So I'm grabbing a random skeleton captain. These kind of work the same as skeletons, except that uh, they are worth money and points um, if you bring in their uh, their dusty old bones uh, to to the uh, outpost. Um, so you can sell them like, like cargo. And... Uh, as long as there are other skeletons on the space, they cannot be attacked. But there's three skeletons out there now. So I've placed those. Oh yeah, we also get a treasure token. Yeah, one treasure in, the in that island. So this place is now a lot more valuable. I'm close to it, but left brain could get there. And that's a little concerning. Um, but maybe they won't get all of it because there's a lot of skeletons there. So that uh, card has been played. Event cards, now we each get a fortune card. And something that hasn't come up is um, one. Oh, you know what? A thing that I forgot to do. Uh, left Brain had four uh, fortune cards in their hand at the end of the turn. They, you have max hand limit of three at the end of your turn. So they needed to get rid of one of them. Um, I don't uh, think I'm going to be sinking anytime soon, so I'm going to get rid of the rowboat that I had. Um, but now we draw one uh, for each. Cool. 
And uh, then we are going to go into the next turn with left brain first. And yeah, I am definitely looking at this. How can I get there? Well, they've got these there's dangerous waters here. Um, and that's if you move all the way through it, then you take some damage. I don't want to take damage. So, but I could go around it. Uh, let's see. One, two, three. But then a sail. So I, it would take me two, two moves to get there. The other thing is if you end your movement in the dangerous terrain, it doesn't damage you. So if I just spend my crew actions to just go there and then do an open sail, I can get there this turn. But I don't think it, mm, it doesn't quite matter too much. But the thing is, if I get there, I need to do plundering and then I'll just defeat the skeletons. Although that, that, that one skeleton is worth some points. So I think it's still worth it kind of regardless. So I'm going to need two of my task actions just to go the one space. Then I'm going to do open sail. Um, and I move. Oh, you know what? Thing that we all forgot. All of us. You two, I bet. Um, is that my sloop. Not this big one. Oh, where were you? I think you were here. Um, but the sloop has Frostart Phineas. And Frostart Phineas can go through dangerous terrain. Uh, they treat treacherous waters as if they were open sea hexes. So I can just go a one, two. I don't even need to worry about it. And uh, sure, got a, a success, gets me into the space. The only problem is now I'm here. I'm only rolling two dice on these guys. So I need three successes. You know what? I think it would have been smarter to take the, the brigantine, um, brigantine there. Uh, just kind of regardless. Because they get to roll three dice. Oh, well, you know what? I'm here. This is where I live. I've made this mistake, and now I'm, I'm dealing with it. So we're doing plundering uh, at the keel hall. I'm hoping to defeat at least the skeletons. So what that means is I need to get at least one six and another success, uh, which I did. I So I defeat all of the skeletons. One, two, and the skeleton captain and I get to hold on to the Skeleton Captain. That goes right into my uh, ship's hold. That's gonna be worth two points and 400 gold when I sell that. That seems like a pretty good deal. Um, the other two Skeletons go back into the loot bag. And that was the second activation. And now I've got this Brigantine. What do you wanna do? Well, I've got some... Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know how I forgot to discard fortunes? On left brain, I just forgot to discard voyages on right brain. Uh, at the end of your turn, you can only have up to three of these. I think I wanted to get rid of, ooh, probably that skeletal tithe because I got a better one. And uh, let's say let's say the bounty hunters because I didn't think there was going to be skeletons um, worth going for at the end of my last turn. So I just got these three. So now I'm looking at my brigantine. Maybe I want to uh, attach one of these. Uh, one of these guys. Well, Keelhaul Fort. Was I mixing things up? Right Brain was the one who wanted to go to Keelhaul Fort. Um, yeah. And it's not Right Brain's turn. It's not Right Brain's turn. None of this. Oh, no. Oh, I've messed things up so bad. I'm sorry, guys. Yeah. Um, so what just happened? Basically, uh, I... Let's say the left brain had been doing that. Right brain didn't have, uh, left brain didn't have the guy, but let's say we made it there uh, safely with the, with that open sail action. Um, anyway, God, sorry about that. Just sometimes, you know, when you split your brain into two halves, as I'm sure you know, uh, because everyone does this all the time, um, you mix things up a little bit and that's okay. We've gone here. We've taken out the skeleton. We captured it. We have it. We've done two activations on these guys. The Brigantine, what do I want to do? I've got some things. I've got a special delivery that needs to go after a lot of cargo. Trolling the seas, this does me to want does want me to go after skeleton ships. So you know what? I'm going to activate this ability here. Patrolling the seas. Uh, if the ship places a damage token on a skeleton ship, I put progress on this card. So I need to go hunting for this ship, but that's, Easier said than done, because I can go one, two, I could, you know, I could get into the location, but then it's just gonna attack me. Do I care about that? Because I think I can take the hits. 
It's going to try and deal four damage to me, but then I would defend using my crew. And I think I can, I think I can take it. I have three crew. Do I have any? Oh, this long shot is almost useful for that. Um, boarding already, barrel balls. These are all cool, but they're not quite useful for me at the moment. Um, I think, you know what, come at me. Yeah, I'm going here and I'm going to open sail in right into it. This is maybe not the smartest thing to do. Uh, I only got one success anyway. Uh, that's, a, well, that happened. Um, so I move into that space. Uh, that's the end of my turn. We go over to right brain. Hey, look at this. Keelhaul Fort has got some treasure there. I do want that, but I also want to do a treasure hunt. So I'm using my Brigantine, activating the treasure hunt. I need to get stuff at Keelhaul Fort. We send our, use our crew tasks to get into the space. Um, and now we're just going plundering. And I need to plunder, I need to get six successes, not at once, but just six successes to work on this treasure hunt. I also see some treasure here, and I wouldn't mind making it so that left brain doesn't get it. Uh, well, and this is a good start, starting with four successes right there. So you know what? Let's grab this bit of treasure, and two more successes will go into progress tokens for my treasure hunt. I'm going to take another turn and just try it again. Uh, this one did not go as well. I got one success. So... One token, I can just flip one of these over to the three side. So I'm halfway towards towards this, but that's still pretty good. And now, uh, that was two activations on the brig. Uh, so now my sloop is gonna go. Where do I wanna go with the sloop? Mm, this likes to defeat skeletons. Skeleton captain, skeleton captain's defeated already, so I can't really do that. And treasure tokens. I think I just, I just wanna find um, I just want to find some treasure. Now, I do see the skeleton sloop, but it's going to be difficult for me to get there and do anything about it. So, I want to just try a shipwreck. Uh, although I need to be on an island? I don't even need to be on an island for this. So, I'm going to use, I'm just going to do a shipwreck. I don't need to go anywhere. Hmm. This just lets, this will, it helps me draw loot tokens. But yeah, it's, it's fine. I don't need to go anywhere. I'm just gonna do it from the outpost. Playing the shipwreck card. This is a special action, which means it's gonna take my whole turn. And it lets me make a crew roll and draw a loot token for every success that I do. And I get to ignore skeletons if I draw skeletons. So out of this, I got two successes. So two loot tokens, which is good because I sold all of my stuff and got rid of all my planks and bananas. Um, so even getting some of those would be good. Well, I drew a skeleton. That goes back in the bag. But I got a little piece of loot. It's not worth much, only worth 100. Um, maybe I can make some commissions with that. Anyway, that was Right Brain's turn. We're going to go to a little bit more... Um, uh, we're going to go to the hazards of the sea. The skeleton sloop gets to go. And because there is... Uh, there's not a skeleton... There's not a ship in the same hex as it, but there is one within three hexes. It is by itself, and it is not on the outpost. So the ship moves in to attack that brigandine, and the way that it uh, the way that it does that is I set aside a number of damage tokens equal to the number of skeleton slots that it has here, basically hit points that it's got. Um, and now that ship needs to make a crew roll discarding one damage for each success. Well, it's a, it's a, um, it's a brigandine, so it's got three crew, uh, but only got one success. So we're taking off one damage, and three damage comes in to the ship. Now luckily, damage does not sink you right away. Um, what it does is on your turn for each, at the end of your turn for each damage, you increase the water level on your ship, and if it ever gets to the top, then you sink. So they're gonna need to put in some work fixing it, which you can do with planks and bananas. With planks, the plank part of the plank banana token. It's not like you're just shoving a banana into a hole. Um, maybe you are, who's to say? Uh, 
but each one only prepares one damage. I've got three damage. That's a problem. That is a big problem for me. So that was the enemy activation. Now we have an event card. We've got Stormy Waters, but this is telling me that the pirate, uh, what's it called? Or not the pirate, the skeleton fort is going to be spawned, and it is spawning on Cannon Cove. The Skeleton Fort is here, and this is interesting because this is kind of an enemy, but it's never going to attack us. What happens with this guy is that it's a signal to everyone else, essentially, to say, hey, come here, you defeat all these skeletons, you're gonna get a big reward. So, first things first, I grab, uh, I believe, two skeletons, uh, again. Not a ton of skeletons in here. I guess, because I'm playing a two-player game, you, you take some of the skeletons out of the bag. Um, but I'm also just having wild luck. Uh, I think we've put a lot of skeletons on the board, too. Anyway, here we go. Oh, now I dropped five skeletons right there. So, a few skeletons are on the board. The skeleton fort shows up. Uh, don't have a lot of space for it. I'm just actually going to put it right here um, so it's, you know, right where we're uh, looking at. And it comes with a little token. Uh, we have two players, so it just goes right here. And basically, every time you defeat the skeletons in that location, uh, everyone who's there gets two points. And you advance this a little bit more, add some more skeletons to it. So it's a little dangerous because, you know, you keep adding skeletons after you defeat them, but it can be very valuable points-wise. Um, so that is out on the board. Next, roll a random C tile, uh, one, so that's over here, and increase the water level of each ship on that tile by one space unless it would cause the ship to sink. Oh no! Uh, okay, so the Brigantine, water level increases by one because that's the only ship in that space. Uh, again, real bad. Uh, next, you washed ashore the Scurvy Knave. Uh, again, we're tied. Right Brain has the least money, so Right Brain is the Scurvy Knave chooses an island hex and places a skeleton token from the loot bag in that hex. I don't know, man. Let's just keep lumping them all up over here, I guess. Uh, I need to find a, another skeleton, which apparently is easier said than done. Um, uh, where are you? Where are you, skellies? There we go. Listen, the seas are rough, okay? This is, this is a... A predicament I have myself in. I really shouldn't have just waltzed right in there. Um, that's that's the left brain ship. Never mind. This is fine uh, for right brain. All of that damage is on left brain. Gah. Okay. Because <laughs> obviously left brain's patrolling disease. They're the one who wants to do this. I just keep getting mixed up. It's because it's on the right side. Um, my, my Corpus Callosum is, is uh, very intact, um, uh, which is some brain biology humor for you guys. Uh, that's, that's what you're paying for. Okay, so uh, here's where we are. We've done the events, uh, now it's just fortunes. And by the way, if one player had gotten a bunch of points, was far in the lead, in a similar way to Quacks of Quedlinburg, um, there are a bunch of these little crystal balls on the score track and between, if uh, you know, the distance between you and the first player, it contains some of those, then you get to draw extra fortune cards. But as it is now, we're each just drawing one. Uh, some stash. Oh, this gets you some more resource tokens. This is a cool um, cannonball, but again, it's all about attacking other players' ships. We haven't done that just yet. Anyway, uh, left brain, let's deal with this last bit um, of uh, la the last problem right here, and then we'll, we'll move forward. Oh, okay. No, yeah, no, this was still left brain. Yeah. Left brain's the one who took all that all that hurt. And we need to now deal with it. So at the beginning of uh, my turn, when I'm gonna activate this brigantine, one thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spend both of these planks. Uh, these are each um, you know, crew actions <laughs> to heal two damage. So it goes from three down to one, but that's still gonna be an issue for me. I'm hoping to defeat this ship in like one go, um, which is, you know, a task. Uh, anyway, so I'm going to open fire against it. We're in the same space, so I can attack it. I'm rolling three dice. Do I have any fortune cards that might help me? Oh yeah, I also forgot to, they should have, they should have uh, discarded a card. Um, I don't know. Let's 
discard that one for now. Uh, this targets other ships. It would be useful if I was, you know, closer to it. Um, the boarding party. Uh, again, this is other player ships. And drought. Oh, this is extremely important. Let's say I played this at the beginning of my turn. Um, draw two resource tokens from the loot bag and place them in the hold of one of my ships. This is a lifesaver right now. Um, because, I'll just grab one, because instead of uh, using only, because I only had two resources, um, I only had two, and so I was only able to repair two. Uh, with the, the two more, I'm going to spend one of them, keep the third one, to repair the last bit of damage. So now my water level is not going to go any higher. But we are going to need to bail this out at some point. And one thing I could have done is instead of uh, repairing damage, I could have spent one of my crew to just bail the water out. Um, but I, I haven't done that yet. I'm probably going to do it on the next, next turn. So I'm attacking. We've got three dice trying to attack this ship. For each success, I get to place a damage token onto the little skulls of... The ship. So I've done three damage to it. One more damage will destroy it. So I'm just going to take my next turn there uh, real quick. We're going to send one of my crew to bail out the water. Um, the other two are just chilling. And we're attacking this ship again. Uh, got one success, thankfully, which is all we needed. And that is four damage onto the skeleton ship, which means the skeleton ship sinks goes back now. The skeleton ships, they can keep coming back, but if we were to have defeated the Megalodon or the Fracken, that would have been dead dead. Um, but anyway, uh, having defeated that, I uh, get to take the treasure tokens and place them in my ship. No, no, no. It's in the ocean. Um, so, these treasure tokens have fallen into the ocean, so we get to see what they are. They're honestly not that valuable. Um, would have been nice if they were a little bit better. However, I have completed my quest, which was patrolling the seas. Um, actually, I was completing this when I was putting the damage tokens on it. Um, and uh, once I got three or more progress tokens on the card, complete the voyage. Completed, which means I get two whole points back in the lead. Uh, and now this stuff's there. And then the last turn would uh, be over here. You know what? I am just going to uh, take this sloop. Uh, now... I could attack the the Brigantine, um, maybe deal some damage to it. Not a horrible thing to do, except that they could then retaliate, and I am a worse ship. But let's see what it does, because I've got fortune cards, and maybe these will help me out. So I'm going to move one space away, just because I have this long shot card, which allows me to attack from an adjacent space. So I'm going to play the long shot card. Um... I have a boarding party, which actually would allow me to make a crew roll and steal stuff from my opponent. Hey, we're pirates. It makes sense. Um, and they do have some stuff to steal. I don't hate that. But I've got this uh, barrel ball, which uh, when, uh, when I attack them, if I deal damage, then they can't spend resource tokens. They won't be able to heal the damage that I deal. So I'm going to load the barrel ball. I'm attacking them with it. Uh, crew roll only two because it's the sloop. So I'm hoping I get at least one success here. Uh, I got two. So they take two damage. Um, and because the barrel ball uh, was used, it uh, the I'm just going to put this next to them. They can't spend any resources. So they cannot heal that damage, which is going to be a big deal. Um, but that's the end of my turn. So we go over to here. Uh, yeah. So that's a thing. Uh, we can't spend resources until the end of um, until the end of my next turn. So this damage is just going to raise my water level. Luckily, they only did two damage, um, but I'm not going to let that stand. Uh, so yeah, I'm moving in and I'm going to attack them back. I'm rolling three dice, and oh, you know what? Let's oh, I can't. Oof. So. It was smart that they moved away because I have the return fire, but I wasn't in the same space as them and I don't have the long shot, so I wouldn't have been able to use this. Um, Skeleton Horde doesn't help me spyglass, but I have an anchor ball, uh, which if they, uh, if I hit them, I'm gonna load this anchor ball and I'm gonna attack them back. 
Uh, so I dealt three damage to them, and they can't move now. Uh, so I've dealt three damage. They're going to probably going to sink. Well, they've got some uh, supplies. They might be able to. They might be fine. Or they might have been fine if I only attacked them once. But attack them again. Uh, and that's two more damage. So now with five damage on them, they're probably going to sink, which means that that skeleton that they grabbed, ooh, that's going to go into the ocean. Um, and uh, they're not going to have that anymore. So that's that little bit of uh, turn. And now my sloop, which is back here. We got a little bit of cargo. I think this sloop, oh yeah, we're going to move over here and we're going to start defeating these skeletons. So we're doing uh, just a plunder action um, <clears throat> onto this location. It's still a sloop, so it's not working that hard on it. Oh, you know what? I forgot about Bombardier Betty. When Bombardier Betty attacks an enemy, <clears throat> rolling additional die. So with two more dice, there's one more damage on, on my opponent. They are screwed. I got really distracted from this treasure hunt that I was doing. Um, I could do that next turn if I wanted to. Uh, anyway, the sloop is plundering the uh, pirate, the skeleton fort. Uh, only got one success, so one skeleton's removed. Um, but that means that one of the crew is also defeated because there's one skeleton left in this place. I was going to help me get two because then I would have gotten a couple points. But that's the end of that turn. Uh, and I think I'm going to wrap it up here. So we've got, you know, the next turn would be uh, enemy actions, but the skeleton fort doesn't really do anything. Um, an event would come up that would spawn, ooh, the megalodon would come out. So big sharky boy is now roaming the ocean. Very scary. We need to, we would need to avoid them if possible. And then some other stuff would happen. More fortune cards would come out. And at this point, uh, Red would be gaining extra fortune cards as well. Um, but I think I'm going to leave it off here. I think this is giving you a pretty decent idea of the game as it's played. So if you want to hear my final thoughts, why don't you click on that link in the top right corner next to my head here. Um, or uh, you can click it in the show notes below if you don't feel like being whimsical. Um, but I will see you folks there in three, two, one. Bye-bye.